Hi, everybody. My name is Rafa Lombardino, and this is Translation Confessional. If you're like most translators, you'd rather spend your time translating than digging through your inbox in different Excel files. But too many translators spend hours every week manually managing their jobs and clients. Invoicing, financial tracking, and keeping track of all your jobs doesn't need to be so time consuming. In fact, you can do it easily from one easy to manage platform made by and for translators. You can create and send quotes, manage your rates and services for each client, manage projects, and send invoices all from one place. It automatically creates financial reports for you, so you always know the health of your business. Ready to stop wasting time on admin and start spending more time translating? Try LSP Expert for free for 30 days. Just type lsp.expert into your preferred browser and use the code HAFA for 15% off a new yearly subscription. Once again, the code is R-A-F-A. Take control of your translation business admin today. Nothing wrong with having an accent. Today, let's talk about a very hot topic, accents. People are usually looked down upon if they have an accent, as if they were not proficient enough in their non-native language. The problem is that many people mistake accents with proper pronunciation and associate both with intellectual level, which is totally absurd. Right now, I'm thinking about that Wolf of Wall Street meme when Leonardo DiCaprio is laughing out loud on his boat. The caption reads, Making fun of my accent? I'm bilingual. It has nothing to do with the movie itself, but it paints a very good picture of the reality for someone who is bilingual. Because you may not ever get rid of your accent, right? Neither should you try too hard, because there's nothing wrong with having an accent. It's just a kind of flavor that your voice has, and it indicates where you're from. But then again, accents aren't always associated with knowing more than one language. The English spoken in the United States is completely different from the English spoken in England, Ireland, Scotland, Australia, New Zealand, India, Nigeria, Ghana, and so many other countries. Geez, the English spoken in the United States doesn't even sound the same all across the board because there are different accents in different regions and states in a country of continental proportions. Many native English speakers in the United States may say that they don't have an accent, that is, until someone points out some stereotypes, right? Speaking of that, I can watch those accent videos on YouTube all day because it's really fascinating. Even though I've tried to develop an ear for it, because it's part of my work, especially as a transcriber and subtitler, I can't really fake an accent to save my life. Still, my English has sort of evolved, too. I mean, I've already mentioned a few times that my husband thought I had a British accent when we first met over two decades ago. All I know is that the more I listened to English throughout my learning journey, the more I assimilated it and tried to move my mouth the same way, to make the same sounds, to make the same phonetic connections that help with fluency. I remember watching an interview with Charlize Theron at the actor's studio once. A young woman from France who was studying to be an actress Ask Charlize Theron how she had developed such a neutral accent, being from South Africa and all, and having Afrikaans as her native language. Charlize told her that she just over-enunciates words, because that's what casting directors seem to be looking for in an actress like her, who could pass for an American. I guess it's a good tip, you know, just trying to mimic what you see on TV 
and picking up things here and there if you can't interact with native speakers. As for me, I remember memorizing lyrics of songs to try to train my mouth to make the sounds in English. I mean, maybe that's why I had sort of a British accent at first, because I lived off of simply read music between 11 and 14 years of age, and I still listen to them to this day. That's my favorite band. But then I remember how Aerosmith was on the top of the charts in the early 90s, in some sort of a comeback act that they were having. Get a Grip was one of the first CDs I bought when I got a CD player. I'm really dating myself here. But listening to all those contractions in Steven Tyler's singing really helped me learn how to link sounds and train my speech systems. And I got to learn tons of vocabulary by listening to music in English during my formative years. My go-to CDs and cassette tapes back in high school also included Alanis Morissette and Matchbox 20, a bunch of Californians like Red Hot Chili Peppers, Stone Table Pilots, The Offspring, No Doubt, and then Wet Wet Wet, which I can only describe as Scottish country. I kind of blame them for not being able to say the word um, cold in a more neutral way before pausing and focusing very hard on the O sound. Speaking of that, learning English in Brazil wasn't a walk in the park when it comes to the kind of indoctrination process we're subjected to at some language schools. I mean, some English teachers, at least a couple of the clueless ones I had back then, would mock students when they mispronounce something in class. We were kind of programmed to be afraid of speaking English because Americans will make fun of your accent. That's why a lot of people would be kind of threatened by that image, you know? The almighty American who is a native English speaker making fun of us Brazilians for saying something wrong. I guess the cultural context here is that many Brazilian kids dream of visiting Disney. And there are some schools that organize trips to Florida for a plane full of teenagers to make their dream come true. So that's kind of the idea that Brazilian kids were exposed to, which discouraged many back in the day to speak English. <laughs> On a side note, I once had an English teacher who tried to make us learn the TH sound by putting a pan in our mouth, kind of on top of our tongue, between our teeth, and telling us to try to blow out some air. That was kind of a good idea if the teacher hadn't used the same pan for the first three kids before me. When it was my turn, I grabbed my own pan and tried it myself to make her realize she was potentially passing germs around the classroom. Yuck. I also have some not-so-nice memories about learning Spanish in Brazil. The kind of mocking tone was similar among last professional teachers, who would say that we were speaking portuñol, that is, espanol, with a heavy influence of Portuguese. Because of that, I think I never felt 100% comfortable expressing myself in Spanish. And I remember I was only able to pronounce the double R sound for the very first time when practicing it on my own using a cassette tape that had some repetition drills in it, because the pressure was definitely off when no one was watching. Fast forward 25 years since I started studying Spanish, something amusing happened more recently. After one of my daughter's soccer games, we went to a Mexican grocery store the next town over, and my daughter asked for tamales, which is her favorite Mexican dish. There was someone ordering in front of us, and the entire exchange between the customer and the cashier was in Spanish. So my daughter asked me if I was going to order in Spanish too. Not to disappoint her, and to show her that she should be brave instead of shy and afraid of trying new things, I took a deep breath, <laughs> tried to turn off Portuguese in my brain, which means turning on Spanish from Spain, lisp and all, and asked what kind of tamales they had and ordered two pork tamales for my daughter, one for each beautiful corner kick she had during the game. You did it, mamãe, she celebrated as we walked out of the store. You ordered in Spanish. I guess I'll have to do that more often because her reaction alone was very rewarding. And that was before she even had her first treasure tamal. 
Well, nowadays, we have information at our fingertips, content in several languages available 24-7, and the ability to reach out to people on the other side of the world with whom we can engage when learning a language. So, the feeling I get is that everything is much easier and less judgmental, to some degree. I do hope the language learners today are met with more encouragement and appreciated for the progress they make and the knowledge they can share. This is a quick message for all tech-oriented translators and interpreters out there. Let me tell you a bit about AppSumo. It's pretty much a hub for different apps and online programs that can help you streamline your work and become more productive and efficient. They have solutions in different categories, client management, marketing, productivity, sales, SEO, social media, and web development. In case you need help putting together a professional website that will make you stand out, they have different deals going on, so you can pay just a fraction of what these apps and programs go for in the real marketplace. Make sure you subscribe to their newsletter so you can stay on top of the new deals and tools that are constantly added up to their list. Well, if you'd like to check out AppSumo yourself, go to this webpage, bit.ly slash tc app sumo. It's easy to remember. TC for Translation Confessional, then App Sumo. Once again, the webpage is bit.ly slash tc dash app dash sumo. Hope you like it. Talking about pronunciation and fluency, there's another meme that comes to mind. This one is from a sitcom called Modern Family. Gloria, a Colombian immigrant in the United States, is constantly made fun of because of her heavily accented English. There was a whole episode when she ordered baby cheese, you know, that small round cheese snack, and got a box full of baby Jesus figurines instead of baby cheese. That's great for a good chuckle, but on that same episode, her husband Jay, who is a monolingual English speaker, makes fun of her for always mixing up expressions in English. Some of the examples he gives her of her mistakes include doggy dog world instead of dog eat dog world and blessings in the sky instead of blessings in disguise. I'll actually leave a link on this episode's description and hope YouTube doesn't block you from seeing this clip if you're not in the United States because it's a pretty good exchange between an English speaker and a Spanish speaker. If you're talking about this idea of an English speaker mocking someone with an accent. Still, I know people who only speak English and make similar mistakes all the time. And they can't even give the excuse of having another language interfering with their fluency. Some of the examples I've compiled mentally over my two decades here in California include very pacific instead of very specific for all intensive purposes, instead of for all intents and purposes. And a lot of ethnicity, when they meant to compliment someone for being very ethical. Ethnicity, ethics, not the same thing. I mean, we could have an episode just on that, you know? But going back to Gloria from Modern Family, the meme has her saying, do you know how frustrating it is to have to translate everything in my head before I say it? Do you even know how smart I am in Spanish? And that takes me to another issue. Recently, language people were in uproar on LinkedIn because someone decided to attack an interpreter for a video she had posted. Her video was extremely professional, informational, and entertaining. She's a Mexican-American and was talking about how crucial it is for translators and interpreters to have an entrepreneur mentality and understand that they must take care of their own business, you know, thinking of themselves as a small company that provides services to clients and adds value to other companies. Everything was great until a fellow interpreter, who is also Latin American to say the least, decided to mock her accent 
which in my opinion is very mild, and her voice is very pleasant and sweet. This guy came in attacking her as a not-so-professional interpreter for not having a flawless English accent, whatever that may be. Needless to say, translators and interpreters of every color, shape, and size went up in arms to denounce this kind of bullying. It's one thing when mockery comes from people who don't know any better because they're simply xenophobic and look down upon everything that is foreign to them. Another thing entirely is when someone with a similar background as you, who speaks the same languages nevertheless, tries to tear you down to make himself feel good. So, I guess the main message after this long-winded episode is this. Do not judge a book by its cover. In other words, you should not judge someone by the way they speak. Let's put judgment aside and celebrate multiculturalism because we have so much to gain when we learn from each other and look past language-related prejudices. Send me an email at rlombardino at wordawareness.com or leave a voice message on my anchor page. If I get enough feedback and voice messages, I can go back to the subject and post a special podcast episode with everyone's opinion on this very same theme. By the way, my anchor page is anchor.fm slash translation dash confessional. I look forward to hearing from you. Stay tuned for weekly episodes and subscribe to Translation Confessional through your favorite podcast app.